Hello everyone and welcome to my April TBR. My name's Olivia. If you had not been here before, welcome to my channel. I'm so excited about this month's reads mainly because I'm actually going to be reading a lot of arcs this month. Supposedly that's the plan but you know as a mood reader that doesn't always happen. So a lot of these books that I have on my list I don't actually have physically so I am going to be sharing them here on the screen for you guys to see. I was hesitant to even tell you guys that because I wanted to keep it as like a secret TBR reading vlog but it's fine. We all know these books are coming out anyways. They're highly anticipated. I am going to be putting some arcs on this TBR that I'm very excited for. So let's just go ahead and jump right in and start talking about what I'm going to be reading. But before we do, you guys know there's the beloved, or to me, the dreaded TBR jar or mug, which if you haven't been here before, I have a list of my 22 reads that I want to read in 2022, and each month I pick out one. If I don't like that choice, I will pick a second one, but I'm only allowed to stick with the second one if I decide to use that as a choice. So I am being a little bit harder on myself, but at least if I don't like the first one, I can pick a second one. But I didn't actually do this in March because there was the backlist readathon and there's also middle grade March. So that was what all my reading consisted of. And last time I did pick Gone Girl and I had every intention to read it for the backlist readathon and it did not happen because I did not realize it was like a 400 page thriller. So I am going to put this back in the jar and if I pick it again, oh well, but here we go. I am very nervous because honestly I don't even remember <laughs> what's in this jar. Oh boy, I seriously cannot even remember what I put on my list. I feel like it changes all the time. Here we go. <clears throat> So I picked Into the Drowning Deep by Myra Grant or Shannon McGuire, which I'm actually going to save for later this year. I really don't think I'm going to get the chance or want to read this. It's like a Killer Mermaid book and I feel like it'd be really good for the fall season. So I think I'm just going to put this one aside and hope the second one is better. <laughs> Okay, I have Small Spaces by Katherine Arden, so let me go get the book. So apparently the reading gods above wanted me to read a spooky book regardless, so this one is way more doable for me. I know a couple people, especially including my friend Keisha, that's going to be stoked that I chose this, but I am not making any promises. I really <laughs> am not in the mood for either of these. These were not great choices. Honestly, I'm tempted to pick a third one, but we're not going to do that, okay? We're going to stick to it. This is my book for April and you all can hold me to it. So first on my list to read this month is one that I was sent. I asked for it, did not get a reply, so I really am so stoked to have this in my hands right now. Is it Children on the Hill by Jennifer McMahon. This does come out on April 26th and I'm not gonna lie, I actually started this early in March and I'm about 100 pages in and let me tell you, if you guys do not already have this book on pre-order, like, you're gonna want to put it on pre-order. You guys know how much I love this author and talk about the winter people all the time, but seriously, this is a whole nother level. The humor, the just <laughs> everything about this book, I am loving it so much and it definitely is reminiscent of Frankenstein. It has those Mary Shelley vibes. So we have this Dr. Helen who is grand to this little boy Eric and little girl V. They have grown up with her kind of at this inn which is supposedly like works miracles for people. It's kind of like I don't want to say cultish, but it was back in the 70s where a lot of mental health issues and different things were still being worked through. And it's basically this miraculous inn where people go to be healed. But their gran is definitely hiding some secrets, and these two children aren't supposed to interact with anyone. And one day gran brings home this little girl, and she has a cut across her neck or her collarbone. And that is all I will say. There's some creepy things going on. I really have no clue where this is going. But we also have, of course, a dual timeline where V is a grown-up and she is searching for this monster. I'm currently vlogging it and I have no clue what to expect but I can tell you right now so far it's five stars and I cannot wait to finish it. The next book that I'm going to be reading on my Kindle is The House Across the Lake by Riley Sager. This comes out I think July 16th or 6th somewhere around there in July and I am 
pumped for it. I don't know about you guys, but I was not a fan of Survive the Night. I can already tell this one is just going to be so much better. I did not read the synopsis, so I'm going into this one completely blind, but I know the setting is on a lake and there are actually celebrities there, like one person's an author, one's a model who's having issues in her marriage, our main character. I don't even remember what his job description is, but there's just an interesting mix of people at this lake over the summer. As long as it's better than Survive the Night, we're okay because Survive the Night was just not it for me. The next arc I'm going to be reading through is called Stay Awake by Megan Golden. I am going to read really quick a little bit of the synopsis to give you guys a feel for this book, but it sounds super duper creepy and I cannot wait. I really wanted to read The Night Swim before I read this one, but this one just sounds way more interesting to me. Liv Reese wakes up in the back of a taxi with no idea where she is or how she got there. When she's dropped off at the door of her brownstone, a stranger answers, a stranger who now lives in her apartment and forces her out in the cold. She reaches for her phone to call for help only to discover it's missing and in its place is a blood-stained knife. That's when she sees that her hands are covered in black pen scribbled messages like graffiti on her skin. Stay awake. As some of you know, I have this thing for tropes where the main character cannot remember who they are or how they got to where they are or what's happening. I just love the rediscovery of slowly unfolding with them what's going on and this is one of those books as far as I know. So I am very excited to see what happens. And the last arc I have that I'm hopefully gonna be getting through this month is The Stardust Thief. And I literally know close to nothing about this one other than everyone really, really keeps hyping this one up. I hope that means it's gonna be really good. I've been wanting to dabble more an adult fantasy. I feel like I'm kind of growing out of the YA fantasy genre, so hopefully this will be the first step into really just being excited about new releases for adult. The Stardust Thief weaves the gripping tale of a legendary smuggler, a cowardly prince, and a dangerous quest across the desert to find a legendary magical lamp. It also really gave me Aladdin vibes. The synopsis sounds kind of intriguing, but also like crazy. There's like illegal magic. I feel like it's going to be a little bit less heavy on the politics and more into the magic system, which I think is going to be really neat to see. I've been looking for a new adult fantasy that I'm just like obsessed with and yeah, hopefully this is that one. I'm sure this next book will be a big eye roll to some of you who cannot appreciate Sarah J Maas, but that's okay. I have learned to come to terms and admit to the fact that I am Sarah J Maas trash. I will be reading the House of Sky and Breath, the second Crescent City book. I did read a little bit of it. I think about, yeah, about 60 pages, which is nothing in this 800 page book. It's going to take me a very long time to get through. I am going to be reading the audiobook along with it and hopefully that will help. The first one took me like two or three weeks to get through, honestly, because I had other things going on. So this might end up being put on the back burner, but I do want to start reading the Throne of Glass series with two of my close friends and so hopefully they will motivate me to finish this one so we can finally start that other series in May. Just thought I would let you guys know. Um, send me good vibes and prayers because it's gonna take a while to get through this big chunky brick. Another big fantasy series that I've been dying to dive into for a long time now is Mistborn by Brandon Sanderson. And since his new crazy Kickstarter launch went off and his books and him and his channel and everything of that nature has just exploded recently, I'm like, now is the time, okay? Now is the time. I loved Skyward. And he actually recommended or put up a video of which of his books you should start with first. And this one was one of them and the way he described it was so intriguing about how heroes in books usually succeed, they usually take over evil, but in this book the hero actually fails which is not very typical in fantasy books so you know that from the beginning so I'm very excited because I know I'm gonna fall in love with this world. I don't know a single person who doesn't love this book so I really want to get on the hype train, I really want to be in the know and I also have the Way of Kings. It's marketed as young adult, 
which makes me think it'll be easy to get through but if you've read this please tell me because I don't really know what to expect from it in terms of writing. The next new release that comes out this month which apparently I'm just all up to date on the new releases and stuff now or the arcs I don't know that is my hope for April but we'll see what happens is Insomnia by Sarah Pinborough. This comes out on the 17th and I am so stoked. I have only read Behind Her Eyes but this one the synopsis just sounded so so creepy so I'm gonna read some of it for you. Emma Averill worries that her crippling insomnia is a sign that she's slowly going insane like the mother she's worked so hard to leave in her past. Emma loves her life, her high-powered legal career, her two beautiful children, and her wonderful stay-at-home husband but it wasn't always so perfect. When she was just five years old Emma and her older sister went into foster care because of a horrific incident with their mother. Her sister can remember a time when their mother was loving and normal but Emma can only remember her as one thing, a monster. I have a feeling this is going to be a very hard-hitting book and I guess I don't want to spoil behind her eyes for you but there's an element to the book that I am very curious if it's going to be included in her new book. I am just like dying and itching to read this one and I need to get my hands on an arc <laughs> because I can barely wait to read this one. And last but definitely not least, you guys know I always like to add manga or graphic novel to my TBRs and for this month I finally bit the bullet and bought a ballad for Sophie. Ariel Bissette has been talking about this on their Books Unbound podcast for ages now and my copy didn't arrive. It's supposed to arrive today. First of all, this cover is stunning. It looks amazing and I've heard that the author actually wrote a song that it has been put on Spotify that goes along with the graphic novel which is such a unique cool twist and I have to be in the know about this one. Like, it just sounds so incredible. The year is 1997, and a huge mansion stained with cigarette smoke and memories, a bitter old man is shaken by the unexpected visit of an interviewer. Somewhere between reality and fantasy, Julian composes, like in a musical score, a complex and moving story about the cost of success, rivalry, redemption, and flying pianos. When all is said and done, did anyone ever truly win, and is there any music left to play? This one has been described as very aesthetic and the ending is just amazing. I also know that there is adult themes in this one so there may be a couple graphic elements I guess to look out for but any graphic novel Ariel Bissette recommends I will pick up. I'm a sucker for them so I really am praying and hoping that I like this one as much as she does. Okay well these are the only physical books I have here which is already a massive stack to try to get through. I am going to be trying to get through some big fantasy books, reading some arcs, which I typically read faster on my Kindle anyway, so hopefully it's not a problem to get through them. But yeah, that's what I'm going to be reading this month. Let me know what book or new release that you guys are excited to read this month. I always love to hear what you guys are reading and try to get some new recommendations or book ideas, sometimes to switch up my TBR, because as I said, and you all know, I am a giant mood reader. Thank you guys so much for always watching and supporting my channel. I love you so much and until next time I will see you in my next video.